Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, I'm going to discuss about the collection runner within Postman. So till now what we have seen is we have seen how you will basically go ahead and organize your test cases within folders and then this was the test case that we had documented or automated end to end basically creating issue story and then validating that the issue actually got created with the relevant details that we passed into the request when we created the issue type story okay so these were the five calls three get calls to get the relevant details which are mandatory to create an issue type okay and then the post call to create an issue and then get issue call to check that the issue that got created with this post call actually contains whatever we passed into the post call as the request right so within the request in the body whatever we have passed for example project id account id the title etc exactly matches when the issue got created okay so now if we want to so basically till now what we have been doing is we have been running these requests one by one and then ensuring that yes get issue basically issue gets created with the post call and then when we do get issue we are able to get the issue right now every detail that is required in order to get the dynamic attributes or dynamic details within the call have been already automated as part of the previous videos so now can we go ahead and execute this whole set all at once so to, so we don't have to go ahead each call or each api one uh, each request one by one and do our test case right so that's where collection runner becomes really important so how you can launch the collection runner so basically if you go to the collection and go to the ellipses here the three ellipses here then you will see if i click on it you will see that you have the option to run collection right so i can simply click on run collection and it will open the collection runner all right and i explain about this collection runner but before that let's see the other option as well how you can open this collection runner so if i close this move the video here i see this runner in the bottom here right so you can also open collection runner by simply clicking on this runner icon here okay which will open the same window but then no collection will be selected so the better option is basically to open the collection runner from the collection itself now here what you have to do is you have to drag and drop a collection or folder from the sidebar to get started right so basically from the sidebar if i want to execute a particular collection i can simply drag and drop here or if i just want to execute a particular folder for example just create issue story type i can simply drag and drop it here and that will get populated or it will populate all the requests that need to be executed as part of that folder okay so this is what runner will do now if i go and open the collection runner from here from the collection itself okay and i'll say okay run collection if you go to the folder level ellipses here you will see you will get the option of run folder right so you can run the whole collection or you can run a specific folder which has your particular test case end to end scenario that you have documented right within the collection if you say collection runner it will fetch all the folders that are below there and all the requests and or all the apis that are below that particular folder okay so now here if you'll see that we have certain options right so if i minimize this here you will see that we have certain options here so the run order is selected based on the order that is there or order of the apis that is there within your folder right so these are the call api calls so the order that was exactly there within the folder is what you will see the order here now i can go ahead and change the order by just dragging and dropping right if you want to have a different run order now because this order is what i need so i'll just keep it as is and then in the right hand side you will see there are different options right so um if other uh, one one other thing is that we can drag and drop the order as well but we can also deselect a particular request say for example i do not want to execute this request i just want to execute these four requ four requests then i can deselect the one that i do not want to execute as well okay so i'll keep it selected as of now in the right hand side you will see that how you want to run the collection so right now in this video i'll run it manually right so with the collection runner i have selected everything and i'll run it manually the other option that you see here is schedule the run so you can run a collection at a particular time you can also schedule the run 
okay and uh, you can periodically run the collection at a specified time by scheduling it right you can schedule the name okay you can put the name of the scheduler and then you can set the timer here as well but before that let's quickly run it manually and understand the execution there so run manually will basically run when you click on this run api test or whatever the collection here it is okay and then the third option is automate runs via cli so there is a this is another uh, tool that is provided by postman which i'll cover in upcoming videos wherein you can automate this collection run as well when you run it manually you will see that here you have an option of iteration so how many times you want to run it so i want to run it only once or if you want to run you know a couple of times then you just put the iterations as the numbers there okay you can have different iterations or multiple iterations there then if you want to have some sort of a delay between the calls then you can put the milliseconds or the, the delay that needs to be there if you if it is a data driven testing then you can select a data file which i'll cover as a separate video altogether when i'll cover the data driven testing right and then if you go to the advanced settings right um the other option here is this persist response right so responses are persisted only for a session and not saved permanently now this is important to see that when your execution is running right are the responses being saved in the session or not right so you can basically see that yes what all responses you are getting right if you check this then you have advanced settings stop run if an error occurs keep variable values and then save cookies after collection run okay then you have another option run collection without using uh, stored cookies which usually just keep it as default whatever selection is there this one we want to ensure that these responses are persisted in the console and we can basically see so let's quickly run this okay so i will run it without selecting the responses okay and then see the console okay so so if i open the console all right and now if i go ahead and run this whole collection right so basically the whole test should get executed and the issue should get created right so at the moment if i open jira here the last issue that got created was that csp156 okay so let me run this collection okay i'll click on this run and then the run will start okay so you'll see that we have got all the execution details basically what all calls have been executed right and then all of this has been logged here okay so if we go to the details here you will see that here we have the iteration that has been logged to so create issue type story and then the test cases that were there are basically displayed here as well and nothing failed and okay in the all test you will see all the in iteration it shows all the iteration and every call that has been sent is basically sent there right and here you will see that you will see that uh, basically because we if we go here right so we didn't select that persist right so that is why you don't see the response response is not persist by default you may choose to persist response uh, session in run configuration and run again right so basically that was the setting so if you go to the run configuration you will see this is if you see persist response then if i execute then it will basically persist those those response now we have run this successfully now if say for example i want to go ahead and see the previous run okay so if i go to the runner okay prior to that let's quickly see that the the issue uh, actually got created basically we saw that it was 156 previously and now you'll see 157 got created in jira right so basically from the collection with just one execution the whole collection runner executed and the issue got created and also validated that yes whatever issue had been created with the post call actually the summary of the issue that got created matches to the issue from the next call when we did the get issue call okay now let's see how we can see the previous run or whatever we have run previously so in order to view it so in order to view the previous runs it's not uh, really straightforward you have to basically go to the collection right so you need to know where to look for the previous run so if you go to any of the collection select the collection right and then you will see the runs how many runs tab here okay so if we see here runs is there okay next to the variables and here you will be able to see how many collection runs have happened okay so this was the one that we just did okay and i can go ahead and see the details so if i go to the view report uh, it will open the report and then we can see what all has been executed there 
okay uh, what was the runner which environment executed how many iterations duration or test etc so everything will be logged here all right and then here you'll have the view all runs as well so i can simply go ahead to view all run and you'll be able to see that one last thing i want to mention about the collection runner is that in postman free account you do not get unlimited runs for a collection you have the limited amount or limited number of collection runs that you can do in a month right so basically if you simply go to this here in the right hand side you'll see this upgrade right in the free version if you go to the drop down here you will see manual collection runner runs is 25 right so basically if you just hover over total number of local collection runner runs done by your team members so this is basically five i've already done and only 20 only 25 are allocated um for for this particular month so basically this resets uh, i believe every month so you can basically go ahead and see uh, the billing etc but say in terms of collection you won't be needing it too much but it's good within your enterprise if you have a paid plan obviously you will be getting unlimited you know collection depending on the plan that your enterprise has taken then you don't have to worry about it but then you have to be careful when you are running or learning postman and doing the collection runs because as soon as you reach this limit you won't be able to run the collection anymore right so i'll be a little bit cautious here uh, when i'm using free account and learning so just learn or run whenever i need to actually go ahead and run the whole collection right there are other ways to automate this whole collection run which i'll cover which is postman command line interface and also newman that i'll cover in the upcoming video so that's all for this video about the collection runner i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching